Hey fellow gardeners, Amy here with Garden Up. Today what I want to talk about are these little growths right here. So these little guys, when you look at them, you, you would think this is a cone. This is on a spruce tree. It totally just looks like a cone. But if you look closer, it is absolutely not a cone. This is actually a gall caused by a little bug called Cooley Spruce Gall Adelgid. Scientific name, Adelgis Cooleyi. This little bugger, uh, it has a fascinating life cycle. It's really complex and it can be up to two years for these things to fully mature and complete its life cycle. So in most cases, it's not too big of a deal. If you have a couple of these galls on your spruce tree, you should be okay, really, but it doesn't hurt to prune them out. But severe infestation can cause a lot of issues with your spruces and it can cause issues with your fir trees too because the Cooley Spruce Gall Adelgid's life cycle goes back and forth between both trees, which is one of the reasons it's so complicated and it's so fascinating. So I wanna go into a little bit about its life cycle and a little bit about the different methods of control that you can use to get rid of it. So we should start with signs and symptoms, okay? What it does is it crawls into the new growth on a spruce in the spring. And the eating habits, it has a piercing sucking mouth part with a toxin in it that is what makes the new growth grow this way instead of normally. This one's really interesting because it only did half. So that's kind of weird. Inside each of these little pockets is where the nymphs mature. And then in July or August, these start to open up and the more mature but not quite yet adults emerge and they go spread and they usually either hang out at the base of the spruce leaves or they go to a fir and do the same thing and they overwinter on the fir. Females overwinter on the fir and over the course of the winter they suck, you know, they use their mouth parts to suck the nutrients out of the fir and they create this like white stringy waxy coating over themselves while they're in there they lay their eggs and then the eggs hatch in the spring and the newly hatched nymphs travel to a spruce where they do this okay they go into the new growth and this is where they turn it, uh, the growth into the galls the galls change colors they start out as kind of a green and then they can turn either red or purple which is actually really pretty and then they open up in july and august and that's when the bugs emerge so I want to cut a couple of these open. I want to look at them under my microscope so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on on the inside. Here's a good one. You can see the pocket right here. That's, that's where a bug grew up, okay? And then the little openings, they open up and then the bugs emerge. Right now it's uh, early to mid-October. We're not gonna find any bugs in here. There we go. There's the pockets opened in the other direction. So yeah, this one's just really interesting. So like I said, this is not turned into a gall, but this side is. So I'm also going to look at that under the microscope. That's the part of the tree that wasn't as affected. So that's what the inside vascular system would normally look like. But this... There's the little pockets where the little dudes lived. Each one of these little pockets housed an individual nymph. The nymphs would suck those sweet succulent juices out of the plant using their piercing and sucking mouth parts and, uh, until they were mature enough to emerge in the midsummer. There's the chamber. That's got some other kind of mold or something setting into it. Okay, so controls for different parts of the year. You'll need to look up the life cycle and the timing for your area because it can vary from one 
uh, zone and one climate to another. In our area in the inland northwest, it's mid-spring around April, pretty much all through April. Um, but you have to spray, if you're using a spray like a chemical, which follow the label directions, right? Or neem oil, which is an organic spray, or soap. You can use insect soap on these, um, which my insect soap is just Dawn dish soap with water, okay? You can use that, that's fine. Um, but you have to spray it when the buds are just starting to break, okay? The new growth is just starting to open up. And before the nymphs wax over and start to get into the uh, into the growth and make their galls, okay? So you have to watch and pay attention and spray at just the right time, okay? So sprays are a little bit tricky. Um, you can also spray in the fall, mid-September to through most of October. And right now what we're trying to catch is the um, young adults and older nymphs that are currently traveling to a fur, okay? So that's what we're trying to spray right now. So, if you catch it in the summer months, which honestly, this is the easiest time to control it, all you have to do is cut the galls out. That's it. <laughs> so, I mean, on a small tree like this one, that's not a big deal. We could reach the top branches even just with a small ladder. So, we're just going to take these out. I'm going to dump them in a bucket of soapy water just as a precaution, because I don't take any chances. Um, but it's probably not even necessary to do that, but do destroy them. Throw them in your trash or burn them or soak them in soapy water or whatever, but make sure they are destroyed and then you should have these under control um, before they cause a really big problem. Uh, this is a bug that causes a lot of economic problems to Christmas tree farms because they have both spruces and firs on a Christmas tree farm, right? So that can be a big problem. But for most people, just in your landscapes, it's not that big of a deal. Oh, wow. That's interesting. This is another thing I've never seen before. This one, they created a gall, but the tree continued to grow. Usually the galls are the end of it. The tree won't grow again from here after that. Look at that. The way it grew, it's almost fasciated, but that's a whole different issue. Wow, I've never seen that. So this would have been a gall from last year. Usually the galls um, prevent the branch from continuing to grow. So you'll get this ugly gall on the end and then that'll just be the end. There won't be any more growth after that. Even though it's October and I can't actually control the bugs by pruning, I am still gonna prune them out just because they're unsightly. And I wanna see new galls next year, so I don't need old ones you know, messing with me later. So one of the best ways to prevent Cooley spruce gall adelgid is to not plant uh, spruces right next to a fir. And in this particular instance, I don't know who planted this. Um, the client doesn't know who planted it either, but this is a fir and it's literally within a foot of this spruce. <laughs> So you're literally just providing an environment for the Cooley spruce gall adelgid to complete its life cycle super easily. Now it doesn't have to have firs to complete its life cycle, but it does help it a lot. It can overwinter on the spruce um, if it can't find a fir, but when you put a fir right next to a spruce it just makes it really easy. Um, so in this case, this particular fir, one, it's so close to the spruce that it's causing problems. Uh, two, it's very sickly looking, and I have suspicions that this is damage from the Cooley spruce gall adelgids. Um, I can't figure out what else it is, and the adelgids do cause yellowing and twisting and misshapening of the stems and the firs, so that's probably what's going on here, is that this tree was really damaged and this one just has a few galls. So, in this case, we are going to take this tree out. We also got an arborist's approval to do this as well. He, he recommended the same thing. And then that will, I mean, hopefully reduce a little bit, but there's firs right over there. It's not like the adelgids have a long way to go. <laughs> but this was just a little bit extreme, okay? Let's pretend it's midsummer and you see these. What do you do about them? You literally just prune them out, and I would, I'm gonna dump them in a bucket of soapy water. Super soapy, sudsy water. 
So in the summer, this is pretty much what you would do. Just do your whole tree, take an afternoon, find the zen in cutting out bugs and try not to think about how gross they are. And then just swish that up and then dump it out and then throw the stuff away. Okay. Now, if it's spring, I'm going to spray this with a dormant oil like neem, or I'm going to spray it with a, um, an insecticidal soap, which is what I'm going to do today, because you can also do that in the fall. We've pruned out all of the galls, and then the bugs that have already emerged, we are hopefully going to get under control by spraying, which if you've seen my videos, you know that all I use is dish soap. So I'm going to use the hose end detachment sprayer because this is such a tall tree. Any other sprayer I wouldn't be able to get to. And I'm just going to put a little bit, maybe a lot, <laughs> in there. And then we'll need to turn the water on. So one thing I do want you to notice is that on a Colorado blue spruce, or any spruce that has a blue tint to it, um, it's not blue anymore. Spraying it with anything from oil to soap or whatever, uh, it makes the light refract differently. So I'm not actually doing anything to the tree, except it, it changes the way that the light bounces off of it. So you want to be aware of that before you spray your Colorado blue because it's not going to be blue and that might be the case for up to about three months. So just know that going in, you're not hurting your tree, okay? It will change color, but it'll change back soon enough. So a little more of this. Thanks for watching everybody. If you like this video, remember to hit the like button down below, and if you haven't already, please subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications and all that good stuff. Uh, today I want to thank my new client for letting me film on, on location here, and I also want to thank my assistant and friend Leanne for helping me film. And if you have an idea for any videos you'd like to see, garden related, leave a comment down below and we'll see what we can do for you. And uh, have a great day, and I will see you in the garden.